going forward to listen in humility to the voices of people who are saying that they have been harmed and to listen and to uh, work towards healing on both sides. That was, a, that was a powerful debate and one of the interesting things about it is that we chose not to use gendered language in that overture uh, because of the recognition that while statistically more uh, men tend to be identified as ab abusers. Yeah. The truth is women are equally capable of committing that kind yeah. of harmful action. So we made sure that the language acknowledged that it can happen, it can be the responsibility of all kinds of people and it can happen to all kinds of people. Yeah. Our, our guest today are the Reverend Pat Robb, who's just been speaking. Uh, uh, Pat is the pastor at Union Presbyterian Church in Endicott, and the Reverend Becky Kindig, who is the associate pastor of the United Presbyterian Church in downtown Binghamton. And we're talking about the 223rd General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church USA. Yes. Full disclosure, I'm, I'm in that church too. <laughs> um, racial equality, race and inequality. Um, this is nothing new. The, uh, in fact, I was thinking that the, the General Assembly that, to which I was a commissioner back in the early 80s was a General Assembly that brought together the former Presbyterian Church U.S., which was called the Southern Church back then, and the United Presbyterian Church USA, which was the Northern or National Church. Mm -hmm. The two churches had split during the Civil War over racial issues, mm -hmm. over slavery. Mm -hmm. And finally, in the mid 80s, they came back together. And I was, you know, I was ordained in this presbytery uh, and then um, uh, worked in the Southern Church. Mm -hmm. And so to see these two churches reunite after all these years, yes. after that issue had been dealt with, yes. but it really hasn't. No. So we're still dealing with racial inequality. What, what took place? There were several things that were put in place for this General Assembly, um, a lot by the planners, the local team down in St. Louis, um, with a lot of people that are active in that ministry down there of all denominations. Um, the worship on Sunday, when we were there, it was like the second day that we were there, we were sent to local congregations and many of them were preaching messages about uh, racial inequality and things like that. And so that was, that was um, a big theme of the day and kind of from starting out. Um, another thing that got brought um, forward that tied to that a little bit um, was the doctrine of discovery. We have now repudiated that yes. and we have been mandated that all of our churches and presbyteries are supposed to learn about this and then put forward our own apology. Um, so there was a lot of different things throughout the assembly, one of the biggest ones that we were able to do, um, our stated clerk of the PCUSA uh, wants to no longer just show up in a, in a town for this big two-year meeting yeah. and you know give money to the hotels and restaurants, but <laughs> wants the PCUSA to make a difference in the towns that we show up to and to help us as pastors and elders and uh, you know, theological students and young adult advisory delegates, there was all kinds of people there to learn about how to take a stand on a lot of these issues. And so the worship that we had at General Assembly, um, the first one, we were told that the money given in that um, first offering was going to go to help bail out people in St. Louis who have minor offenses that maybe someone like you or I would not have to you know, worry about because we get pulled over for a traffic ticket and we can just go home. And people who don't have the money or are a different you know, skin color, they go to jail and they can't get out. And so then they lose their jobs and they have trouble with their family. I mean, it's, it's a huge, huge problem that you know, we're becoming more and more aware about. Mm -hmm. So we raised yeah. $40,000 mm -hmm. that day for bail for St. Louis. And by the time the middle of the week came, uh, we were gonna go deliver it 
and mass. <laughs> uh, I think you have a picture of us marching um, in 101 degree weather a mile from the <laughs> convention center down to the Justice, the Justice Center, center um, to deliver this money. And by the time we got there, we had over $50,000. Um, raised and to bail and out thousands people. of people marched. Thousands right? of people yeah. marched. Yeah. yeah, we had over 2,000 yeah. was what we heard. Um, and this wasn't just something that we decided to spontaneously do. There was a lot of planning put into this, um, and it was very well done on the local organizations who had already been for weeks vetting the people, hearing the stories, trying to do the most with the amount of money. Yeah. And what's great is that this money will then be able to be used again as you know bail you know they they appear for their traffic ticket or whatever mm, yeah. will then get to be used for other people who are you know suffering you know this the system yeah. of mm. yeah well, because most of us for a nonviolent offense would would post bail and mm -hmm. be out yeah that's right but folks who don't have the money sit in jail unconvicted right. mm -hmm. they've not had trial yet they're just right. sitting there and it can be months or or years yep. and this is 90 percent of the people who are in our jails right now 90 wow. percent of the people who are, are in our jails right now have not been convicted of a crime yeah. but are awaiting trial yeah and that is a disparity that has to do with obviously with poverty uh often it has to do with race yeah. and so we wanted to make a difference in this one place at this one time and that's what we do. That's pretty. Uh, but pretty we impressive. also learned how to be able to take it back to that's our right. own places because Binghamton has a similar situation. Yes, it does. Our county jail has a lot of people who, just because they can't pay their bail, are sitting in jail, whether yeah. they're guilty or not. Like so mm -hmm. I know personally people because um, we are in a downtown congregation, we hear stories that they didn't do anything wrong. They yeah. were arrested and they have to sit in jail for months until they can have a trial. And you're right, they, they, they lose their job, they're not they going do. to work, and so mm -hmm. now that that exacerbates the, the mm -hmm. poverty issue for yep. them. They yeah. may lose housing yeah. over it. Yep. Uh, it's it's yeah. a serious problem. Yeah. So that that's, um, that's quite an impressive action. And as you said, the uh, the stated clerk of the denomination. You're the stated clerk of the of presbytery, presbytery here. The stated clerk of the denomination wants to be sure that every two years when the General Assembly meets in another major city in their convention mm -hmm. center, that it's more than just, um, the value is more than just the hotel rooms and the meals, right. but you become involved. And I think there were other things going on too. You know, if people came here, they might work in community gardens or they That's might right. work with chow or something. Uh, right. Not that the General Assembly would ever meet in Binghamton, but. <laughs> but you never know. You never yeah, know. You it never wasn't know. Syracuse never know. in the day. Like. That's right. Oh yes, people still talk, people in our yes, churches still talk about what a, what a glorious time it was in Syracuse when we, we had worship together and sang together. And it's, it's a very impressive, uh, full of pageantry almost in, yes. in some of the worship. So you've already talked about the fact that this was a less contentious General mm -hmm. Assembly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I mean, we, we use the term love feast, probably mm -hmm. not quite that, but a family reunion a sense. Mm -hmm. um, is that because some folks have left the denomination who were not happy with previous decisions made and therefore there are fewer people to bring an opposite opinion? There are some issues that have been settled and for reasons of those issues being settled, many of them are around sexuality, the ordination of GLBTQ uh, pastors and elders and deacons and also the fact that I believe uh, two general assemblies ago we embraced uh, marriage equality as well. So those issues, um, it's absolutely true. There were some folks who could not, in their conscience, stay in a denomination that uh, approved of those. But what happens as a result is that the people who are there are more of one mind mm -hmm. and are more of one heart. And uh, maybe love fest is too strong a word, but I, I've I been know. to two general assemblies, one uh, in 2001 as well as this one. And in 2001, I served on a committee that immediately divided into two camps. Yeah. And the stress and distress of that remained with me so strongly that this time I was anxious going to General Assembly. And as it happens, I served on a committee that absolutely worked uh, with a consensus model 
and everything we sent to the assembly to be voted upon was sent with a unanimous vote because there was listening, there was respect, uh, and yeah, there was love. Mm -hmm. And it was a pretty wonderful experience. Yeah. I have to say, um, not b serving on a committee because I'm state of clerk, um, I could go around to lots of different committees and you know support the commissioners from our presbytery who were there, but kind of get a feel about what's going on in a lot of the committees. And I think there was, and I haven't been to a general assembly before, so I don't know if this is the case, but there was a concerted effort by the moderators of each committee yeah. to remind people over um, decisions that were that could be divisive or contentious that whoever however the vote was going to come out there were going to be winners and losers and so to remember if you're on the winning side that there are brothers and sisters yeah. that are hurting over this decision. Yeah. Every single committee that yes. I went to had a moderator that reminded people of that, both the committee members and the people observing in the room. Yeah. And so when these decisions got made, there was, there was not a, a big cheer by one side. There was not, you know, yelling mm -hmm. and arguing. There was, there was a general, you know, sigh and then the moderators always then entered into a time of prayer yeah. for both sides, yeah. that this mm -hmm. is what God's will was and that, you know, that we can then continue to yeah. work together and come mm -hmm. together um, in the way forward. And yeah, so I, uh, I don't know if that was not happening before, but there was a very serious yeah. intention to remind us of that. And this is one uh, denomination's uh, national meeting. And if you are part of a Methodist church, a Baptist church, an Episcopal church, uh, you want to realize your local congregation is connected to something greater, uh, uh, well, maybe not greater, but you know <laughs> what I'm trying to say. Thank you for joining us, Pat Robb from the Union Presbyterian Church and Becky Kindig from the United Presbyterian Church in Binghamton. I'm Jeff Kellum, thanking you for being with us on this edition of Encounter and hope uh, that in the coming week you'll be gentle with people and with yourself. Mm -hmm.